Anyways, I want to see what actual architects think of this kind of stuff because oh God, my nose. Oh God. I almost sneezed and then I didn't. I hate that so much. Oh. Okay, let's see what they have to say. Let me turn this up a bit. There's like a little chapel perched up on the top of it. The architecture also has this defensive quality. There were periods where they used that as a motif, but they didn't actually serve a defensive purpose. I don't know about you, Ben, but I do have this attachment to things being of a certain historical period and all making sense. And it doesn't yeah. need to. I mean, where's Elden Ring? It could be an alternate universe. I mean, you know. My name is Benjamin Ball. I'm the founder of Ball Nogues Studio in Los Angeles. I have a studio which produces public art, architectural environments, and we also do our own fabrication, so we build things. I'm Alexis Redinger, and I founded Preen Inc. We're an architecture and hospitality design firm specializing in restaurants and hotels. Oh, that's Today, cool. we're going to be checking out a game called Elden Ring. This is what happens when reclaimed wood is overused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole city goes up in flames. It's, no, it's <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen sort of a long shingle like that. Have you been? I don't think I have. It's, it's unclear whether it's a shingle or whether it's a plank of wood. It's kind of in between. I don't know that a horse would, it would support a horse and a rider. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure Torrent weighs nothing. He's a spirit. And on... Uh, no, I haven't seen that one yet, Dapper. It's something to look into. Sorry. Moving that back a little bit. I haven't seen that video yet, but that looks like something I should watch. Yeah, I don't think so. Plausibility isn't the first thing that game designers seem to think about, but this is a more plausible world than Minecraft in a way. I mean, well, it looks, <laughs> yeah. it's more realistic. Oh, for sure. I mean, someone has spent a lot of time studying traditional architectural details and then yeah. adapted it too. There was like Very a cool. column just to step back. They kind of almost look like a more lamppost from turn of the century right there on the left. On the left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Castle architecture, which is, I can't tell which period because there's this sort of Edwardian aspect applied to it as well. My knowledge of medieval architecture gets pretty murky. One thing you see in a lot of these procession. Yeah. The character moves a kind of wide long shot of structure and then they approach a gate and then they approach, they move into a vestibule and then they move into a hall. Yeah. All these turns. Look at the, the turret detail and articulation. It's almost like the tracery, the ornament that you see on windows. Fantastical, but beautiful. It is beautiful. She's right. Is that laundry? <laughs> I don't yeah. think that was laundry hanging. No. <laughs> As opposed to the- No, that's not laundry. <laughs> no. The, the Close though. The one now is much more medieval, functional. There's a lot of defensive fortress architecture in contrast to the processional architecture that would have traditionally been used to elevate the status of the church. Well, that's probably because this is a fortress. You know, I mean, it's built in a very, very defensible location. You know, they're kind of on a cliffside. You have to, like, go on a bridge to get to it. Or you have to scale the walls, which sounds like hell. You literally, you'll just get hit by an arrow and there you go. But, you know, it's, it is a fortress and... Radon was a warrior. I don't, I don't think he cared. Like, obviously he, he dressed himself very beautifully and he was very, very decorated, but I could see him being a very practical man when it comes to his, his base of operations. That's, you know, that's true, Dabber. I wonder what these people actually know about Elden Ring or if they literally only know about the architecture. That is true. 
It looks like a much more modern pillar. Don't you think, Ben? It's an Ionic order. It doesn't have the intricate detail of the other classical orders. Oh, pretty steep grade. <laughs> yeah. It's probably something you wouldn't have seen in a medieval building. Yeah, not it, not that wide. If you were to see that steeper grade, it might be under a castle, but it'd be like a little tunnel. Yeah. This is weird because it's there's Renaissance detailing, like a kind of classical revival. It's also this kind of medieval catacomb. There's a thousand years of history mashed up into this space. <gasps> the color is awesome. The detailing yeah. is not a medieval. Y'all, the, the Volcano Manor was so beautiful. It was oh, stunning. All night era. It's much later. Several of these remind me of San Simeon, the gigantic fireplaces. Almost several of the spaces that we've been in have had hearths, fireplaces, you know, they kind of orient you when you're in the game. I yeah. yeah, I don't think they know much about Elden Ring and the Souls games. It's okay though, I only know a limited amount. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sort of gone with the wind a little bit too <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a just a decayed space this looks like a space that's more maintained i guess and i don't think you would actually so it's a barrel vault the whole room yeah but then they've coffered yeah um which one wouldn't have traditionally done that at all because it's the idea of like a stone coffer but then a stone circular barrel arch they could have got the idea from DC Subway. <laughs> I love that. Barrel vaults that have these coffers. Oh. I mean, game designers are just borrowing. Well, I think the, the DC Metro had the advantage of having concrete. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. right, right, right. Again, this is Citizen table. Kane. Again, they really use a lot of the, the stuff from there. Well, I don't know about you, Ben, but I do have this attachment to... It It looks like it's it's just a bunch of tables placed together. Like, it's it's not really... Like... It's just a bunch of tables placed together. Yeah, that's not one big table. Like, that's a table. That's a table. That's a table. It's not... A giant table. Sorry to crush all your dreams. The Pantheon. Oh, I want to go to Rome so badly. I want to go back to Europe. I want to see a bunch of the architecture. Berlin was incredible. And... I did not get to see a lot of like incredible ancient architecture. <laughs> it's just a really nice place, but I want to go to like, I want to go to like Switzerland and Austria and, and Italy. And I want to see all these ancient cool buildings. I want to go back to France and see a lot of the churches and stuff. Oh, I only spent a day and a half in France and you know where we went? I was 17, and I was not designing this trip. The Eiffel Tower. They decided we were gonna go to the Eiffel Tower. But then we also went to Juno Beach. That was very cool. That was very cool. It was really cool seeing the giant gun turrets uh, on the beach. It was really cool. But yeah, Eiffel Tower? Pfft. Really lame. Oh my god. Yeah, Eiffel Tower is the prettiest view in Paris because it's the only place you can't see the Eiffel Tower, honestly. You know, the problem is that we went in August? In August. literally tourist month there were so many people this there was this one lady that like she had really long hair and she like flapped her hair around and like hit me and she got mad at me for touching her hair it's like girl you literally flipped it around and it got all over me and she had to like 
pull her hair like it got caught in like my earrings and shit like and she got mad at me like fuck you jesus christ I, oh god paris was awful oh my god that would be so freaking cool dapper i did okay so i went to england for a couple weeks i don't want to get too sidetracked because we still have this but since we're talking about castles and stuff I went to England for a couple weeks, and then I went to Ireland for a couple weeks, and I went all around the Ring of Kerry. I went to Blarney Castle. Oh my god. I did kiss the Blarney Stone. I know. It's disgusting, but... Oh my god. And, like, the garden around it was so nice. We went to the Cliffs of Moher. We walked all along the cliffs to, like, the, 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 the castle at the end, which is really just, like, a big rectangle that's falling apart <laughs> basically just a just a, a little tower like a square tower that's like empty <laughs> but man i would go back to ireland in a heartbeat the people were amazing the landscape was so hauntingly beautiful uh like the, all the castles we went to this old jail that got turned to a museum so so amazing we went all around the ring of carry it was incredible i had the best time i i almost got to go to scotland on that trip we were gone for like a month um it was really nice it was really really nice but i, I didn't get to go to scotland one day i'll go to iceland too all right anyways back to the video <laughs> Again, this is Citizen Kane. Again, they really use a lot of the, the stuff from there. I don't know about you, Ben, but I do have this attachment to things being of a certain historical period and all making sense. And it doesn't need to. I mean, where's Elden Ring? It could be an alternate universe. <laughs> yeah. So there is no time. There is no time. Yeah, that's what I learned as a set designer. It doesn't really... Unless the, the story <laughs> needs to be firmly grounded in a particular yeah. period. Yeah, fair. You can borrow freely to create dramatic effect. I like this yes, guy. Yes, and yet at the same time, all those little devices like feeling the grit or the rug really looking like the rug are the things that ground it and get... You know, the one thing that I do really appreciate a lot about Elden Ring, though, all these, like very prominent castles in different places in the world all look very different but everything inside of them fits like it all makes sense to that area like like the academy everything feels in place it's really it's really great everything works and they're all different I mean, maybe she gets serious. You don't know. I would talk architecture with her. She knows her shit. Give the whole experience authenticity. So it's kind of interesting what needs to show up as more photo real and then what doesn't need to. It's huge. Yeah, I mean, that's a mashup of different castles and different architectural typologies. Manor is a good word. Yeah. It's not exactly a castle, right? Yeah. Sort of like a merchant manor. <laughs> oh, back in the day in Europe, they used to um, you used to pay taxes based on how many windows you had in your yeah. house. Yeah. Right, oh my right, god. Right. That person did. You know, I learned about that, and I was wondering why the hell there were so many buildings that had no windows. Paying taxes based on how many windows you have. That's so stupid. Why? Oh my god. Would have been uh, highly taxed. Highly <laughs> taxed. There's like a little chapel perched up on the top of it. The architecture also has this defensive quality. There were periods where they used that as a motif, but they didn't actually serve a defensive purpose. This building looks like it would be vulnerable to attack, although that's pretty steep. Defensive architecture now, it's a get off of my lawn house. <laughs> More decay. Well, this looks like there's there's a lava flow running through the... It's beautiful paving. I've never seen paving like that. Lava is molten rock, so if lava is touching rock, it's melting it. Or it's cooling on it. It's cooling on it. 
Was Take that, a, that some kind of mechanical device? That, like some kind of big turbine? Look at that. Yeah. I mean, this is another historical thing too, right? Like it wouldn't be metal at that time. It'd be a stone wheel. Nobody would be articulating or moving a, a bridge that's built in stone. But I mean, if you had a lava waterfall. <laughs> Almost like somebody had a late night party. So like they left all the candles on the ground near the huddle pedal. It's all right, Dapper. Normal people exist out there. They're allowed to just because they're different. She's defo had a late night party before. <laughs> she so she does seem a little tired. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how it's more golden tone. Yeah. No decay, but they still have a weed problem. But again, there's no people inhabiting these cities who are alone. Somebody lurking around the corners, but for the most part, the whole culture of the place has been wiped out. Look at that detail on that. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a huge colonnade, kind of basically an arch. Cathedrals often have huge doors that were, you know, scaled much larger than any person would have experienced at that at the time that they were built it was you, know, you were walking into the house of god they were scaled to impress that's historically accurate i think that what they've done here is just exaggerated well there's definitely some like italian renaissance detail but then like some sort of english manner that's pretty you know, it's it's interesting to see that most of these the games that we've seen thus far are set in a Western European world. But we haven't yet seen Thailand or Aztec universe. Yo, oh. wow. that would be. I don't. I have not played Sekiro. I know it's supposed to be more of like a, like, more of like an Asian inspired Souls game. But it would be really cool to have a Souls game that's in, like, like having, like, the Mongolian plains and having, like, the tropics with crazy creatures and, like, ancient temples that have wicked designs and stuff all over. That would be so cool. That would be really, really cool. I would play the shit out of that. Just does make me feel like I do have to play Sekiro at some point. And it is kind of interesting though, because I isn't um isn't from software like a a, a a Japanese game development company? It a lot of the stuff is very, very, very Western inspired. Makes you think a little. It's interesting. Wow. That's one of the ways they got our architectural articulation back in the day. They killed the dragon and then it just sort of froze. <laughs> That's like the interior of the Pantheon. That's totally the Pantheon, which would have been a, oh, a Roman wow. pagan temple that oh, was created is. by the Catholic Church. Never seen anything like it. <laughs> yeah, never seen anything like it. I like how it makes staggered. Sense. Oh, this looks like an 80s album cover, totally. and I can't remember which one. <laughs> well, a lot of video games look like Molly Hatchet, Southern Rock Band from that time. It's funny because that's a ruin, right? Like, that's like a, either a Greek or a Roman, a Syrian ruin, ruin, right? A lot of architects in the Renaissance, that was all they had to learn from. People built in these classical periods, this kind of idealized past. And so there's a lot of documentation of ruins that was done during the Renaissance by architects Mogue. who traveled yeah, to visit ruins as a, a way of go. gathering knowledge. I don't think it's too random. I think it's about telling a story. I mean, if it was architecture, I mean, you're not looking at architecture, you're looking at a setting for a story. Mm -hmm. You're in one kind of kingdom and you, then you're in another kind of a kingdom. Yeah. And so it's to really use different nice. architectural styles are used almost like characters in a, in a story. 
is it random? No, it's not random. It's very thought out by the game designers. If it yeah. was an actual building, there'd be some people that were pleased, but there'd also be a lot of people that were not happy with it. It's a little <laughs> loose. <laughs> right. If that was done <laughs> in real life, there would be some outcry. In a way, it's like every project we touch, there's an ethos to it that has to do with the business, with the brand. Yeah. And so that narrative that gets created in the way we design that project. It's the same, same with video game too. So it's a whole realm. For more experts react, yeah. subscribe yeah, to for Gameology. Sure. For more Gameology videos, head over to Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> Background. I always have problems describing what I do and characterizing it for people who don't, because I do a lot of different things, so. Sometimes the brain stops connecting to the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> Y'all, that's so true. I think that was good. I think that was good. It's it's interesting hearing people's opinions on on game stuff, especially when they're not gamers themselves. It's it's neat hearing an outside opinion. And I think that they were pretty spot on with a lot of stuff. I I mean, I feel like it would be really interesting to watch someone who was like a historian looking at Elden Ring. Yeah, oh no, for sure. I mean, it is different, but it's 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 neat seeing everybody's opinion on it. I like it. I watch tons of reaction content, <laughs> I find. So it's, it's neat to do it myself too, but like, I don't know, I really like hearing and seeing different people's opinions and speculations and seeing them see it for the first time. I think it's it's interesting. It's like you're sharing an experience with somebody, but it's like you you already know about it and it's 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 cool to see different people's interpretations. <laughs>